Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to discuss on one secret about Jupiter which you will not find in many places. Well, the thing is everybody knows about this but nobody uses this, okay? So today we will discuss why Jupiter is the greatest benefic and what actually does it mean to be the greatest benefic because many a times people do not know the meaning of this word and they think that benefic means it makes you a millionaire or a billionaire or it gives you all material prosperity because primarily in this world in, in this material world the conception of happiness is more in the sense of pleasure rather than internal happiness okay so today we'll see why is jupiter the greatest benefic why what is there in jupiter which is not there in any other planet okay why why does parashara say that now we have to understand that jupiter is a very important planet he is the significator of the second house the fifth house the seventh house the ninth house and the eleventh house so many houses you see two five seven nine eleven five houses in the chart and some also say he is the significator of the 10th house well he is also to some extent but the question is why is he the greatest benefic and there is something about jupiter which people miss which means that they know this but they don't use this okay and you will hardly find this anywhere in youtube or in the books so today we shall try to discuss about what is that and yes as usual if you are new to the channel then please uh, do subscribe to it and if you want a consultation from me regarding your jupiter then you could always go down to the description section of my videos where you will find the link to my website to book a reading with me personally and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him and last week i had made a video on the date 25th december this year where six planets will be conjunct in sagittarius and that video has got many views in a very few days almost 17 18 thousand views and uh, till now people are sending me mails by and expressing their gratitude that i made this video and i dispelled many of the confusions but along with that there are some people who are also sending me mails asking that what will happen on uh, 31st of august this year okay so that's a new fancy date what's so special about 31st august uh, 2019 well the fancy thing is five planets are conjunct in the sign of leo okay sun mercury venus moon mars they are in the sign of leo that day and many people are thinking that again the world will be destroyed or something fancy will happen all right so they've asked me what is my opinion on that so my opinion is the same which was there for the video of 25th december my opinion is you will get up in the morning you will take a bath and maybe go to the office but that's saturday i guess so no office and if you ask me what i'll be doing that day I will be going to Hamburg, Germany because we are celebrating Rath Yatra festival there. Okay, So it's like just another day. So there's nothing to uh, become excited about that day. Okay, Your life will be the same. That's the bad news. And the good news is you will not die. You will survive. Okay, You will live. Okay, so now let's come back to Jupiter. See, if you want to understand a planet, there's one thing which you have to do. What do you have to do? You have to go to the Vishnu avatar which represents that planet. And you have to learn the story very well. Okay. Otherwise, you will just know the planets theoretically. You will not be able to apply that planet or the things that that planet represents in your life because you don't know how should we behave regarding that planet. Okay. So, for example, Jupiter, which avatar of Vishnu represents Jupiter? It is the great Vaman Dev. Yes, Vaman Dev represents the 
or I would say the life of Vamandev represents the activities of Jupiter, okay, which is vividly described in the eighth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. So, if you want to know more about Jupiter, then you must study the eighth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, where the story of Bali Maharaj is mentioned. And now many people will tell me that don't keep telling stories, just get to the point. Well, that's the problem. You see, you don't know the story and you are running around checking Jupiter is in my third house, fourth house. If you don't know the story, you can go to a million astrologers. You can do million astrology courses. You will never understand what Jupiter does in your chart. Okay. So listen to the story. So what is the story? Long story cut short. Bali Maharaj is one of the demons. I mean, he's not a demon by action, but he's born in a demoniac family. Okay. He is born in a Daitya family and he is wanting to do a yagya, a very famous sacrifice because of which uh, he has to give some donations and when once he completes that yagya, he becomes Indra, which means Indra is, uh, Indra means the king of the heavens. Okay, and The word Indra generally means the king or the leader but in the vedic context when we say indra it generally means the king of the heavens okay so this is like uh, the word rashi means a zodiac sign but in india or in the vedic context when we say that his rashi is mithun which means they are actually indicating that his moon sign the person's moon sign is gemini okay so similarly, the word Indra, there is uh, there are many words which mean uh, refer to Indra, but at a generic sense, Indra is the post. Indra is not a permanent uh, position; it's it's a post. Okay, it's like a prime minister of a country or the president. For some time, somebody goes and takes charge in that post. So the Shrimad Bhagavatam vividly describes these cycles for how long somebody can stay in the post of Indra. So. For one Manvantara, okay, so in one day of Brahma, there are so many Manus, okay, and one Manvantara is the time till when these demigods stay in their positions, okay. So we'll go to the technical calculations later on. And in this current Manvantara, the Indra who is residing, his name is Purandara. Okay, so there are 14 Manus in one day of Brahma. So if you divide it, the thousand uh, Divya Yugas, then it comes to around uh, 72 almost. Okay, so 72 Divya Yugas is the time for one Indra. And one Divya Yuga is the combination of Treta Yuga, Satya Yuga, Dwapar Yuga and Kali Yuga. All the four Yugas, that's one Divya Yuga. And the current Indra, his name is Purandar. So Purandar is the one who is holding the post of Indra currently. So now Bali Maharaj, he forcefully, because of his Guru Shukracharya's advice and because of Shukracharya's envy towards the demigods, the devatas, Shukracharya wants that his disciple, he goes and sits in the throne of Indra. Well, now anybody can become Indra if you follow the procedure. Okay. So they say if you do 100 Ashwamedh Yagyas, you can become Indra. And uh, they say if you do 1000, then you become Brahma. Okay. So now what happens is he can do it in a standard way. But what Sukracharya is doing is he is forcing it. Okay. So because of that, what is happening? Uh, I mean, out of nowhere, Bali Maharaj just starts doing Yagyas. Okay. And the last Yagya, he is about to complete. But before completion, he has to give some donations to spiritual people. Okay, the Brahmans and the Rishis and the sages. And unless the donation is given, the Yagya is not complete. So now here is the catch, you see. Then Lord Vishnu takes Avatar as Vaman Dev and he appears. Vaman means he's a very small boy. He's very small. <laughs> he's not a child exactly, but elder, but he's he's very small. And he takes a umbrella and he comes, you know, very sweet boy. So then what happens is 
he tells him that so my dear bali you have to give me some charity now as you uh, as you are supposed to give then vamandev asks uh, bali maharaj tells to vamandev that yes please tell me what do you want and then bali maharaj uh, the vamandev uh, says that first you have to promise me that whatever i ask you will give me and then what happens shukracharya comes now shukracharya is a great personality he he understands by his divine will and by his power of his austerity is that this person is not a ordinary brahmin he is lord vishnu himself and he will very soon strip off bali maharaj from all his possessions now Shukracharya warns Bali Maharaj that my dear Bali, please do not give any dakshina to this Brahmin. You will become a beggar. You will become a pauper. You will be you will be left nowhere. You will come to the streets if you do this. You will be finished completely. Here's the catch, you see. <laughs> then what happens? Now Bali Maharaj, although he's born in a, born in a demoniac family, but by consciousness he is a great personality because he is one of the twelve Mahajans. Vishimal Bhagavatam describes the twelve Mahajans. You know, one of them is Bali Maharaj, and the other one is his his ancestor Pralad Maharaj. Okay, so two of them are from this uh, this same family, the same family of the demons. And Bali Maharaj says, "No, whenever it comes to giving charity, I cannot deny. Anybody who asks charity, I will fulfill." And then Bali Maharaj takes oath that. I take a vow that whatever this Brahmin asks, I will give. Even if I have to sever my head off, I will give. And then Vamandev says, I want three steps of land. And then he expands his form. And then what happens? With one leg, he marks the entire lower planetary systems. Okay. And with the other, he marks the entire higher planetary system. So the 14 planetary systems, six above and seven below, he marks all the 14 planetary systems. And then Bali is left nowhere. And then Vamandev ties up Bali Maharaj. He says, you Bali, you are a cheater. You are a liar. You told me you will give me three steps, but... You did not give me because with two steps I have marked the entire universe. And now Bali is also a great soul. He says, No, there's still one place remaining where you will put your feet. And that is my ego. And my ego is in my head. So please put your feet, your third feet, above my head. And when Bali did this, Vamande was extremely pleased. And then what happened? Vamandev blessed him that in the next Manvantara, you will be the in the post of Indra. You are the next Indra. Okay. So what Bali Maharaj wanted now, Vamandev granted him finally. But what about the time till the next Manvantara comes? Vamandev told him that you will now go to Sutala which is a underwater, it is below the earthly realm, but it is a heavenly planet. It's not a planet actually, it's a heavenly realm. And Sutala is more opulent than the Swarga, which is above. Okay, yes, there, is, there are uh, Bhauma Swarga, there are Bila Swarga, there are different kinds of Swargas. Okay, so there's not, there's not only one heaven, which is just somewhere above and it's the heavenly place. It's not like that. There are many heavens. Okay. Of course, we can discuss about it some other day. That was the second benediction Bali Maharaj got. And what was the third benediction? See, three steps, three benedictions. The third benediction was that I will personally be your doorkeeper. Okay. And I will guard Sutala so that nobody will come and attack you. And when I am guarding, then that's it. Your victory is assured. Can you imagine? God is telling, I will go and be your doorkeeper. It's like a servant. 
God said, I'll be your servant. So what is the lesson now from this story? You may be thinking that, oh, but we have already heard this story hundred times. So what's so special about Jupiter? Well, there's the catch, three things. The first thing is, you have to take a vow to give up something which you love very much. Okay, some bad habit is special. So when you go to the Guru, when you go to the ashram, or when you go to a spiritual community, what is the first thing they will tell you? Yes, that okay, you have to structure your life, you have to get up in the morning, you have to do these mantras, you have to read these these texts, you know, especially the Ramayana, Dima, Bharat, Shimad, Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, especially these four texts. And then you have to give up some bad habit. Okay. So, suppose you are eating meat, then it is expected that if you want to elevate yourself spiritually, you stop killing other animals. Okay. Because the creator will never be happy if you are killing some other child, you see. Because everybody is a children of God and we, we, we have not taken, we do not have the right to take anybody's life. And there is no morality or there is no religion here. There is something called as common sense, which is unfortunately not very common in Kali Yuga. So many times people think that we should stop eating meat because of religious reasons. No, there is no religion there. It's basic common sense. Okay. If I do not have the right to give life to somebody, I do not have the right to take life. It's basic common sense, you see. So then what happens? Second thing, second thing is that Bali Maharaj got what he wanted. Okay. Which means whatever desires we have, it will be fulfilled ultimately. So Bali Maharaj wanted to be Indra. That's what Bamadev said. You will become Indra in the next Manvantara. It, it is certain. It is the word of Bali of Bamadev. It is not just some some random person speaking something. It is, Vishnu has said means it is certain. It has to happen. It has happened already. I mean, it will happen in the future. <laughs> and the third thing, you get something much better and much beyond. Okay, so many times, people think that if they give up something for God, then they will lose a lot of things of this material world. Okay. So you will realize that once you become more serious and you start doing spiritual practices, you will, you will have to cut connections from the mundane materialistic society. Okay. So many times people feel it's too much of a price. Okay. Because then you have to make friends in a community where people are discussing about spiritual topics. You cannot go and just linger around with the people who are just eating meat or drinking wine because that will put you into tamoguna again okay again no morality here it's common sense so that means all of your sacrifice will be worth it and you will get something much better than what you expected okay so if you extrapolate this principle or i would say if you apply this principle to jupiter then how do you understand well, wherever Jupiter is sitting or whichever houses it is lording or whichever houses it is aspecting. So regarding those planets, you have to make some sacrifice. Okay. Now what that sacrifice is when you make it in the dashas or in the dashas of those planets which are connected, conjunct or aspected by Jupiter. That's a separate story. That will depend on your chart. Okay. But when you make certain sacrifices which you, will, which you yourself know, Okay, then you will see that you get things much beyond your expectation. And you will not only get mundane things, you will also get spiritual wisdom. You will be elevated at a spiritual level and you will know how should I utilize these planets. Because many times people, uh, well, what happens is, in the astrology books they say it is written, wherever Jupiter aspects, it shows past life blessings. Okay. So then people just think, oh, Jupiter is aspecting my son, so I'll be famous. Why? Because I've been blessed from past life, right? It is sheer nonsense. It is not like that. If you want to harness the blessings, because there are many times people will write, you know, my Jupiter is aspecting Venus, but my married life is ruined. Jupiter aspects seventh house, divorce. Married life is ruined. Partner has cheated. Okay, Jupiter in fifth house. 
children uh, was my children took birth and then died or i have to do abortion or this happened that happened so many things you will see which people write that jupiter said uh, for example jupiter in the fifth house will give you children but then there was no children okay jupiter aspecting the ascendant life is great lg life's good but life's terrible sometimes okay and you will also see many people writing in the comments okay that uh, jupiter is just like another planet it doesn't give you big things it just makes your life easy sometimes or it makes your life terrible but what i am saying is if you do not understand how to harness those blessings then you will never ever ever in the next thousand years see the results of this planet this planet will be just sitting and no matter where it aspects which planets it is conjunct with you will never ever ever see any results but the day you start doing spiritual practices that is the day you will start seeing the results of jupiter and one very good way is to read the shrimad bhagavatam's eighth canto so if you read that you will know what is the value of sacrifice okay you will know the great achievements of personalities like bali that he went against his guru his guru told him he he disobeyed the order of his guru he did guru avagya which is like the greatest of all aparads which any disciple can commit but even then he prospered beyond his expectations much 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 beyond okay and then here's the funny thing okay. at the end when this past time is over vaman dev asks to shukrachari that my dear shukrachari what happened to your disciple he became a beggar everything was taken away from him <laughs> because shukracharya he is also a great personality okay and then shukracharya says and i am not uh, saying this from my side it is there in the eighth canto of the shrimad bhagavatam shukracharya says to vamandev he says my dear lord wherever there is inauspiciousness wherever there are problems but at the end when somebody chants your name your holy name all the discrepancies are vanished yes so essentially he meant that maybe vaman uh, that maybe bali maharaj did not follow what i said maybe bali maharaj disobeyed me maybe he did not get the heavens now but because he followed what you said ultimately he was successful he was the ultimate um, he was victorious in the greatest in the highest sense you know like dhruva maharaj was victorious so that is what shukracharya says so that also shows that shukracharya ultimately knew that bali maharaj will uh, prosper <laughs> but because of his uh, enmity with the devatas he could not guide him in that direction okay because shukracharya has association with the demons but that does not mean he doesn't know about the scriptural truths okay he is well aware of everything and that is why at the end he says one who chants your holy name all the discrepancies are vanished and he attains ultimate perfection okay so that's the catch you have to do some sacrifice you will not only get what you want and the third is you will get something much better okay so now somebody who has heard this video till the end so now they will sit with a book of expectations maybe <laughs> and okay so my jupiter is in the seventh house okay i will get the most uh, beautiful charming and the most wealthiest partner ever to be born okay so that may be your expectation because now i told you right you will get things beyond your expectation so now you will start and sit and expect things well that's not the expectation which i am talking about the when i say you will get things much beyond your expectation it means that irrespective of however your circumstances are at an external level you will find spiritual fulfillment okay so 
therefore it is very important that we start doing spiritual practices today itself not tomorrow not day after many times people ask me that i want to start chanting some mantras can you tell me a good nakshatra a good day a good vara all useless questions there is no good day for chanting mantras which is the best day today is the day okay and i don't know where moon is today or tomorrow doesn't matter okay the day you are seeing this video is the best day started now and every day just read 30 minutes of the bhagavad gita or the shrimad bhagavatam then you will be able to harness the blessings of jupiter and then you will realize one day that yes these are the things that i sacrificed for my spiritual life and this is what i wanted and now this is what i have got okay and if you do not do this then what will happen you will go to 10 astrologers and you will take 10 consultations you will keep asking them my jupiter is in so and so nakshatra what will it do my jupiter is in 12th house of navamsha will i get this my jupiter is in third house of dasamsha will i become a journalist okay these are the questions which will ponder 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 and your whole life will go in this but you will never find an answer okay but the day you start doing these three things then you will see miracles happening okay and as per numerology jupiter is also three okay and vamandev also asked three steps of land okay so this is what i wanted to say and if you want to know what jupiter will do or how or what are the sacrifices that you need to do well that uh, will depend on your chart and if you are interested then you can always uh, go down to my description section where you will find the link to my website to book a reading with me okay so there you go god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him you will find him okay there you go thank you very much bye bye